This week on Green Science Oregon, we're looking at wave energy, a vast new frontier in renewable energy that's being researched, manufactured, and deployed right here in Oregon. We'll show you how research at Oregon State University is helping to make wave energy more efficient. And wave energy generators will be deployed off the Oregon coast very soon. We'll introduce you to the companies responsible for this massive undertaking. All coming up next on Green Science Oregon. It's been calculated that the total wave energy in the ocean, uh, oceans of the world, is equal to twice the total amount of energy we use to produce electricity throughout the world. So there's no shortage of the amount of energy that's available. The best wave energy resources are in the temperate zones, 30 to 60 degrees of latitude, northern and southern hemispheres, and then west-facing coastlines where the wind and the sun have had a long time to work on the water. Wave energy is really a concentrated form of solar energy, where it's the uneven heating of the Earth's surface that creates the wind, and the wind generates the waves. And what we see is that because our global winds travel from west to east, our significant wave energy potentials are on the west coast of land masses. Oregon is a great place for wave energy. We've got the coastal resources, we've got infrastructure on the coast, meaning the grid um, and substations that we can transmit that power all over the state. Um, there's a deficit of power on the coast um, because most energy is, is um, uh, produced in the east part of the state. And so it really is a win-win situation as far as resource, uh, infrastructure and need. Having that long fetch across the Pacific, um, being in the temperate zones puts Oregon right in the sweet spot from, from a wave energy standpoint. Wave energy is the most concentrated form of any of the renewable energies. The reason is the, uh, the wind blows across the surface of the world and as the waves begin on one side of the ocean, uh, the, the size of those waves increase so that by the time the wave has crossed several thousand miles or more, there's an enormous amount of stored energy in the waves. Uh, the wave energy is much more concentrated than solar and more concentrated than wind. It's also extremely predictable. We can see from a satellite photograph days ahead what the wave energy will be when it reaches the wave power station. Columbia Power is developing an ocean wave energy conversion device, a WEC. Um, and our WEC is a buoy uh, that will be deployed one to three miles offshore along with other buoys in a wave farm in an array of a matrix uh, format. And each of our buoys produces electricity inside the device and that electricity is aggregated on the sea floor in a subsea pod and sent ashore, that electricity is transmitted ashore via uh, a trunk line that uh, eventually goes underground and then emerges to connect into the grid. We licensed that original technology from Oregon State University, uh, now on our third generation of the device. Really, Oregon State's uh, program is the center of gravity for research for wave power here in the U.S. So we are blessed to have that opportunity to, uh, to work with them. Uh, the, uh, the initial prototypes were tested uh, at the Hinsdale facility. They had the Tsunami Wave Basin and also the Wave Flume. We started our wave energy program here at Oregon State in 1998. And we started with really wanting to raise the awareness of the opportunities for harnessing the tremendous amount of energy that we have in the heaving ocean swells and converting that into electrical energy. Our first big contract was with the National Science Foundation. And then we had tremendous uh, support come in from, the, from Oregon Sea Grant. And through those type of contracts, we were able to develop what we call direct drive technologies to give examples of how we can harness that energy from those heaving swells. Green Science Oregon is brought to you by Oregon State University, where faculty, students, and research are powered by Orange. We are
are here in the Wallace Energy Systems and Renewables facility, and we are one of the largest energy systems labs in any university in the nation. And we have a three-quarter megawatt dedicated supply, a dedicated feeder from the utility. And we also are able to fully regenerate back onto the grid. And so this enables us to do a variety of energy systems, renewables, testing, industrial application testing, vehicle, hybrid electric vehicle testing. And, and so it really provides a great environment for students to be able to work and work with industries as they springboard out into the, to the world as, as work-ready graduates. Part of our facility is a wave energy linear test bed. This is where we can test wave energy devices before they're deployed in a wave tank or out in the ocean. Our wave energy linear test bed is designed to create that relative linear motion between a heaving float and a stationary spar. And the device that we have on the wave energy linear test bed right now is a permanent magnet linear generator. It's a 10 kilowatt wave energy converter and it is designed to convert that heaving swell into electrical energy. The way that we're able to control the linear test bed is to be able to apply that same hydrodynamic force onto a magnet assembly and as that heaves that magnet assembly up and down just like the waves would it creates a changing magnetic field. Inside the spar that this magnet assembly surrounds, the spar has generator coils that are specially designed that when they experience this changing magnetic field, voltage is directly induced. And that is an example of our direct drive technologies. So in conjunction with Oregon State, um, in uh, 2007, we did uh, deploy the L10, our second generation device, that linear point, point absorber, uh, off the coast of Newport for a, uh, a sea trial, um, which was very successful for us. We learned a lot. I think Oregon State learned a lot. Um, and really, that was instrumental in helping push us forward to, to the design that we are developing and commercializing now. What's important is that it's survivable, uh, that it's maintainable, that we have a low environmental impact, and you, that you can engineer and design a device that can still produce electricity at a cost-effective rate. Um, and so as part of that survivability, with this 100-year storm sets that we are running across the device, uh, at scale, some of those waves that you'll see, especially the one that crashes over the device, those are about 100, 100 feet, 98 feet, uh, at scale. So that's a monstrous wave and one of the beauties of our device and our design and I uh, credit the, the team that we have in being able to put this together is that we don't have to lock down, we don't have to go in survival mode when, when we're faced with a very nasty environment. EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute, they have estimated that about 6% of the uh, U.S electricity demand could be supplied by wave energy. When we think about wave energy, we think about energy density and how the density of water is about 832 times greater than the density of air. And so we have an opportunity there when you compare wave energy, say with wind energy, where we have the opportunity to extract more power from a smaller volume, which means subsequently lower costs and also lower aesthetic impact, visual impact. And so we really need to explore the research in order to help enable uh, those advantages.